Hello, this is Sally Thorson. I'm with the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. And the purpose of this presentation is to give some background on evidence-based programs for older adult fall prevention. The references and resources that I mentioned, the contact for those will be at the end of the presentation. Why are we concerned about older adult falls? As many of you know, one in three people over the age of 65 fall every year. 20% of those falls results in a serious injury and hospital stays are very expensive. In addition, the fear of falling means that older adults um, just being afraid of falling will lose their lack of confidence in getting around in the community. They'll limit their physical activity, interactions with others, and they'll have more functional decline. So fall prevention is important to combat that fear of falling. Let's look at some of the data on falls. The fall-related death rate for both men and women in Colorado, age 65 and older, has increased over the past 12 years, with women having a higher death rate than men at present. The rate of fall hospitalizations has also increased by age for both women and men in 2011. And if we look at age groups of older adults, as older adults age, there's a higher rate of hospitalizations. So what that all means is that there's a lot of numbers indicating falls are a problem. Deaths, hospitalizations, emergency visits, this data is just for one year in Colorado. And we know there are more that don't receive medical care or receive medical care but don't end up in a hospitalized setting or die. The good news is that fall prevention works and evidence-based programs exist. And I'm going to go through how to find out more about those types of programs. First of all, just to kind of go back a little ways, what is evidence-based, what does that mean? It means that programs are known to work because there's been research, there's been strong evaluation, they've measured specific outcomes, generally falls or rate of falls, there's been replication of these studies, and there are key elements that have been identified that are recommended every time you do that program. And what do we mean by evidence? How do we get that? Their scientific literature has systematic reviews where they look at a lot of studies and combine those and come to conclusions. The scientific literature shows us randomized control trials, which are really the gold standard in um, evidence. And there are also some other studies that are good as well. Public health surveillance data, like I just showed you about falls in hospitals and fall deaths. Then there are other types of evidence which are really weaker and not what we would consider evidence-based. And that would include some very simple program evaluations. People liked the program. People said they would change. Word of mouth, everybody seemed to like it. Personal experience, while well, those can be valuable for marketing, they're not really what we would consider evidence-based. Why use evidence-based? Funders require it. It's getting harder to apply for grants if you don't have an evidence-based program that they're going to use. Agencies or people who implement the programs, they want proven results. They want to know that their money is being well used. Implementers like packaged programs so they can take something off the shelf, get some training, and implement the program. And older adults want programs that work. It's pretty powerful to tell an older adult, if you sign up for this class, and you stick with us. We know the program has great results and we really think you'll see those results as well. So those are all good reasons to go with evidence-based programs. There are two types of evidence-based programs. I'm going to go over both of them. There are guidelines, which are algorithms or ideas for how what elements should be in programs. There are also packaged programs and review of those programs. The first one I want to go over are guidelines. Probably the main group that health professionals like doctors look to are the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force, who did a review of prevention of falls for community dwelling older adults. The May 2012 recommendations included one statement about not recommending automatically performing in-depth multifactorial risk assessment with all patients. They recognized that there wasn't strong evidence that spending all of this time and energy led to a strong result. 
but that individuals based on their false history and medical problems might need that type of work. So it was left really up to the healthcare providers to make that decision. However, what they did recommend are vitamin D supplements, realizing that they can help prevent falls in older adults and exercise and physical therapy does improve strength and balance and has been shown to prevent falls. So healthcare providers hearing that, they need to know where to refer people to to get these types of programs. And that's the next section is to deal with where are these programs and how do we determine those. One of the best reviews of a lot of different types of interventions, medical as well as public health, are the Cochrane Reviews. They did a review of interventions for preventing falls in older people living in the community. This was done in 2012 to update a 2009 version, where they examined over 150 different studies. What were their conclusions? The main conclusion was that there is clear evidence that falls can be prevented with appropriately designed intervention programs. So that's emphasizing there are components of programs that are studied that are essential, and this is not about making up your own program, no matter how well-intended you are in doing that. So what are the categories that the Cochrane Review found effective? Strength and balance exercise programs, home safety interventions for high-risk people, multifactorial assessment and treatment for individuals, again, at high risk, and then some medical solutions like vitamin D, withdrawing, psychotropic medications, and some eye surgery and pacemakers. As, as I go through the rest of the program, you may wonder why it seems I'm emphasizing exercise. Well, here's really the reason, and this statement is similar to one that you can find in two or three other reviews, is that exercise as a single falls prevention intervention is comparable to multifaceted. And we're all trying to find what is the one or two things that we can do that make a big difference when we can't do 20 things. So this conclusion was that the best approach to falls prevention at the population level was looking at exercise. The exercises specially designed for fall prevention work at the risk factors for falls and therefore can be really effective in making a difference in reducing falls. Now I wanted to just review from the Cochrane Review as well as others, come up with ideas of what makes programs the most effective, and then I'll go into specific programs. So for exercise and fall prevention, it's an intervention that's effective if that's the only thing you do is to get older adults to do the right appropriate exercising, that's powerful. And the right exercising is muscle strengthening and balance retraining. So it's not just any old program, but it's a specific program that deals with balance. And the program should challenge balance, have at least 50 hours. No one program probably provides that, but that's the goal that we need to be continually telling older adults about. And it needs to be ongoing as older adults age. It's not a one-time pill to take one class, but to continue with the right classes. The other ideas are medication management. The reviews find that the programs that work are when people are at high risk with multiple medications, and it's involving pharmacists and medical people um, dealing with changing medications. And vision, home safety programs for visually impaired have been really important. Cataract surgery can prevent falls and using single lens glasses can prevent falls for outdoor activities. So those are the things that have the really strong evidence. Multifaceted programs, I've talked about this before, not all of them have been proven to be effective, so it's really difficult to know which part of the multifaceted programs are the ones that we should use. And some thinking is that people just can't adhere to uh, 20 different solutions that might be given to them that taking single interventions and putting those in place may be the most effective and ones that are actually doable. What about home safety? Home safety assessments and modifications are known to be effective if people are at high risk, they've fallen multiple times, or they're at very high risk, say they have vision problems. 
And the research shows this is when programs are given by occupational therapists. Some of the reason for that is the occupational therapist not only helps solve the problems, but also helps show the older adult how to get around in their own environment. So it's involving the client and the family in decision making. It's not merely checklists and changing things in the home, but it's education and having the older adults and the family really buy into the fact that these things are going to be effective. So education, there's no evidence that just doing the greatest educational program you can come up with will be effective, but it's important to have the right messages to include education in every other program that you do. Use adult learning techniques and consider how patients feel and what are their preferences in making decisions. And I'll talk about some specific programs that really are good at meeting these requirements. So what does that all mean? Programs for fall prevention work if they deal with particular high-risk audience, use specific intervention elements, and use adequate dose. What doesn't work is just using seated exercise programs where you're um, sitting in a chair doing exercise or just using a walking program. And it depends on the audience. So programs need to be designed to meet that particular audience. So programs work best if they have a trained provider, someone who knows how to deal with the problem or the solution, and, such as an exercise program, and knows how to deal with the older adult audiences. And provision of just education materials don't work. So now more specific programs. CDC came out with a book, Preventing Falls What Works. It's a 2010 booklet. The next one probably won't be out till 2015. So this is what we have right now. These programs use randomized trials and looked at reduction in falls as the outcome that they required. And they list 22 different interventions. And I'll go through some examples of those later. The National Council on Aging also has a list of programs that they consider effective that meet their level of evidence, you can find the fall prevention programs in that list. And here's the website. Again, this information will be available at the end of the program. You can click on this website to download a chart which gives information about specific programs, details, even things like cost to implement the program. So what do we find? The synopsis is that CDC uses a high level of evidence as required for them to consider it an evidence-based program. They have nine exercise interventions. Three of those are packaged and where you can get that information and implement the program. Three have really limited packaging and availability. There are only three programs that met their standards for home modifications. None of those have packaged programs. And then there are two multifaceted programs that are packaged. NCOA, for programs to meet their requirements, they ask for experimental design. Programs have been translated to the community, not just a research project, and packages available. So these programs have to be proven effective, but their standard of proof is not quite the same as what CDC requires. But uh, amazingly, both of these groups have basically the same types of programs that they've endorsed. For NCOA, it's Matter of Balance, a program they called SAIL, Tai Chi for Arthritis, Tai Chi Moving for Better Balance, and Stepping On. What are the conclusions about package programs? The advantages is you can get a manual and instructions. It's ready to go. They'll provide training and certification or give you information on how to get that. It's clear on the key elements you need to do to have an effective program, and the effectiveness outcomes are known. So you can say to your funders or to your bosses that we know this works. There are also some disadvantages to package programs. Not everything that you read about has a package that you can just buy or download and start and use. For example, there's one program that CDC lists as being effective, but the program materials are only available in German. And not all programs are reviewed. They may be 
programs that meet good guidelines, but they just haven't had the type of studies done to put them in that category, as well as new programs. CDC is probably not going to come out with their book on effective programs until maybe 2015. So there are some programs that probably can, are very effective, but just aren't going to make it into that book until 2015. It can be costly for manuals and training, and tweaking is not allowed. We're all tempted to put our own spin on things, but the key elements are really important in these programs. And you'll still need to do some evaluation to prove value to your organization to ensure that you're instituting the program with fidelity and to examine things like, are people sticking with the entire program? Are we reaching the right people with the program? So there's always a bit of work to do. Now I really wanted to get at what you probably all want to hear about. What are the specific programs? I'm going to start with exercise programs and programs that have an, a strong exercise component. And that's Tai Chi Moving for Better Balance, Tai Chi for Arthritis, and what I call are the active engagement programs, Stepping on Matter of Balance. And then there are a few others I want to talk about. First one, the Tai Chi programs. Tai Chi Moon for Better Balance, Tai Chi for Arthritis are both available in Colorado and they do have packages with training. Other Tai Chi programs can be effective with these elements that they need to happen over at least 12 weeks. They need to be have some specificity for older adults so that they're at the right challenge level. They need to be progressive and challenging. So most Tai Chi programs would fit that but of course, it's a lot easier to be using the ones where there's a strong package available. And then what I call, I'm just calling these active engagement programs, Stepping on a Matter of Balance. These are both available in Colorado. Both of them address the fear of falling. They include exercise as a strong component and encourage people at the end of the seven or eight week program to increase their exercising and maybe take other classes. They cover all of the major fall risk categories in a way where it's a group intervention. They do help people problem solve and provide motivation for them to solve their own problems. In fact, the leaders of these programs are really taught to not provide all the information, but to provide the motivation and the facilitation for the older adults to make their own decisions and changes. And then there's some other programs. Otago is a program given by physical therapists in the home, and that has very strong evidence, but is for a very particular frail audience. SAIL is a program endorsed by the National Council on Aging, which has some good outcomes. Um, I don't know of anyone using it in Colorado, but it certainly there is a package available if somebody wants to look at that program. And other programs don't have the studies behind them at this point, but programs like In Balance meet those guidelines of the types of programs, progressive, challenging, and that kind of thing. So you may find some programs that maybe aren't on one of these two lists, but you can make a good strong case for why those programs are effective. Then I also want to talk about two other types of programs. One are home safety. There are no package programs that are evidence-based. So none of the programs from the National Council on Aging or CDC have links to a package program that you can do. And medical, there are a number of models and ideas and guidelines. Let's look at those more closely. Home safety, again, no package programs, but when you're considering home safety programs, it's important to choose high-risk groups, not just a general audience. Use a validated survey instead of making up your own survey. There's a lot of time and energy goes into the surveys that are used for studies. The more you have trained professionals who visit the home and can work with the older adults on solutions, the better chance of success. There's emerging evidence that home safety programs that are linking to high-risk patients identified through the emergency room or through ambulance services are going to identify the programs that are at high risk and need these types of interventions. Medical solutions exist for fall prevention. I'm going to give you 
some ideas from a steady toolkit of resources. Medical team approach is really needed in order for a patient to be assessed and given the proper referrals. And in particular, we really want to encourage referrals to community programs. And so we need integrated programs in order for that to happen. Steady means stopping elderly accidents, deaths, and injuries. And there are some good materials that health professionals or anyone can use as a component of education and providing a risk assessment for older adults. Some of the patient education materials are also really good to be used with other programs. The resources that I've talked about and the references I've mentioned we're going to have available on the Older Adult Falls Coalition Colorado website. Here's the web address. When you go to that site and you click on the resources tab, this is where you'll find a link to this presentation as well as a paper copy of the resources and references that I mentioned. In conclusion, the job for all of us is how to engage older adults in fall prevention when there's so many other things that they would rather be doing. The marketing of programs is very important. So what you can do, how do you get started? Well, answer these questions. Is the program that, is there a program available in Colorado that you can get training in and get the manuals? And the, I've gone over the programs that are available in Colorado. Does a program like Older Adult Fall Prevention fit your mission so you're not constantly trying to institute something that, for example, you don't have leadership support for? Can you implement the program as designated? Does evidence-based programming make sense to you and you can do the program as designed? Can you evaluate it, at least in some form, to prove effectiveness to your funders, to the people who are taking the program? And who can you partner with? You can't do this alone. After hearing about evidence-based programs, it may be that you want to work with someone else who's doing this program and you help provide some of the guest experts or marketing for that program. So again, the resources and references are available on the website and we welcome any questions and good luck to you in your evidence-based programs.